Hello from deep within the Command Valley, my name is Griffin and thanks for tuning in to another Deck Tech. Thank you to GameGrid for supporting this channel. If you are looking to get any of these cards or other cards that you are looking for for your Commander decks, head on over to their website using the link below where you'll be able to put in cards that you're looking for and get them shipped right to your house. We will include a copy and pasteable link of the deck list in the show notes of the YouTube video for you guys to be able to bring to their website. And if you're looking for a direct way to support the Command Valley, then please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley and check out all of our exclusive perks to our patrons. Definitely something you don't want to miss. Zinnikar Rising has all but just been spoiled, so we're going to keep rolling down the deck tech train building another commander from Zinnikar Rising. Alright, so let's jump into it. On today's deck tech, we're going to be covering Omnath Locus of Creation. Omnath is back and this time we've added white to his color identity, costing red, green, white, blue for a 4-4 legendary creature elemental. When Omnath Locust of Creation enters the battlefield, draw a card. And a landfall trigger, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain 4 life if this is the first time this ability has resolved this turn. If it's the second time, add red, green, white, blue. If it's the third time, Omnath deals 4 damage to each opponent and each planeswalker you don't control. So as you can probably guess, this is going to be a landfall deck. We're going to be packing a lot of fun and unique landfall abilities into this deck to really get a lot of advantage off of something we're already going to be doing in Commander anyway, playing lands. So I've organized this deck tech into a couple of sections, and the first one is going to be our landfall section. We're going to go through all the cards in our deck that have a landfall trigger, and the more of these we have out on the battlefield, the nuttier the deck can get. First off, we have Lotus Cobra. For 1 and a green, we have a 2-1 Creature Snake. Landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may add 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. Vine Lasher Kudzu, which is 1 and a green for a 1-1 one, one plant. Whenever a land comes into play under your control, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Vine Lasher Kudzu. Doesn't have landfall on it, but it's essentially a landfall trigger. Scoot Swarm from Xenicar Rising is 2 and a green for a 1-1 one, one insect with landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token. If you control 6 or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm instead. So if we're getting multiple lands onto the battlefield each turn, we're going to be able to go nuts and have tons of copies of Scoot Swarm, a really fun, exciting new card. Tireless Tracker, for 2 and a green, we have a 3-2 Human Scout. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, investigate. And whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Tireless Tracker. Undergrowth Champion, for 1 green green, we have a 2-2 Elemental. If damage would be dealt to Undergrowth Champion while it has a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, prevent that damage and remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from Undergrowth Champion. And his landfall trigger, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Undergrowth Champion. We have our two and three color Omnaths in here. So we have Omnath, Locust of Rage, for three red, red, green, green, a 5 5 legendary creature elemental with landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 5 5 red and green elemental creature token onto the battlefield. Whenever Omnath, Locust of Rage, or another elemental you control dies, Omnath deals three damage to target creature or player. Then we also have Omnath Locus of the Royal, which is one green, blue, red for a 3-3 three, three elemental. When it enters the battlefield, it deals damage to any target equal to the number of elementals you control. And whenever a land enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target elemental you control. If you control eight or more lands, draw a card. That is very easy to do in this deck. We have tons of ways of getting lands onto the battlefield, so you can be assured that Locus of the Royal is going to be a card draw engine on its own. We have Spitfire Legac, which is 3 and a red for a 3-4 with landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, it deals 1 damage to each opponent. Nesting Dragon, 3 red red for a 5-4 dragon with flying and landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you create a 0-2 red dragon creature egg token with Defender, and when this creature dies, create a 2-2 red dragon creature token with flying, and for 1 red, this creature gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. Tatiova, Benthic Druid, for 3 green blue, we have a 3 3 legendary creature Murfolk Druid. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain 1 life and you draw a card. Morag, Fury of Akum, for 4 red red, we have a 6 6 legendary creature Minotaur Warrior, just spoiled from Zinnikar Rising. Each creature you control gets plus 1 plus 0 for each time it is attacked this turn. And a landfall trigger. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if it's your main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase, the beginning of that combat, untap all the creatures you control. Assuming we can get just two lands onto the battlefield on the same turn, that is two extra combat steps, that is crazy good. 
Rampaging Balos for four green green. We have a six six creature beast with trample and landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a four four green beast creature token onto the battlefield. Royal Elemental for three blue blue blue. We have a three two elemental with flying and landfall. When the land comes into play under your control, you may gain control of target creature for as long as you control Royal Elemental. And our favorite piece of lettuce, Avenger of Zendikar for five green green. We have a five five elemental. When it enters the battlefield, create a zero one green lettuce creature token for each land you control. And landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control you may put a plus one plus one counter on each lettuce creature you control for our artifacts and enchantments we have seer sundial for four generic an artifact whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control you may pay two generic if you do draw a card kalani heart expedition for one and a green we have an enchantment with landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control you may put a quest counter on kalani heart expedition and when it has three counters, you can remove it and sacrifice Kalani Heart Expedition. Then search your library for two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. Another new one from Zendikar Rising, we have Valakut Exploration. For two in a red, we have an enchantment. With landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. And at the beginning of your end step, if there are cards exiled with Valakut Exploration, put them into their owner's graveyard. Then Valakut Exploration deals that much damage to each opponent. Really, really unique and neat card. We're going to be able to get, again, we're going to be able to get a lot of lands onto the battlefield, sometimes upwards of five to six lands per turn. So being able to exile six cards and be able to play them, and at our end step, we chuck them away to deal damage to our opponents is really, really good. Felidar Retreat, three and a white for an enchantment with landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. Choose one, create a 2-2 white cat beast creature token, or put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. I'm, just, I'm gonna put this out here right now just so you guys know there is a field of the dead in this deck which is sort of a landfall trigger it enters the battlefield tapped and taps for a generic however whenever a field of the dead or another land enters the battlefield under your control if you control seven or more lands with different names create a 2-2 black zombie creature token so those are all the cards that we have in this deck that have the landfall or a landfall-esque ability on them but now let's go over the cards we have in this deck that just give us advantage by having those lands out. So it's not necessarily a landfall trigger, but having lands gives us an advantage. For instance, we have Dragon Master Outcast, which is one red for a 1-1 one, one human shaman. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control six or more lands, put a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Scoot Mob, one green for a 1-1 one, one at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control five or more lands, put four plus one plus one counters on Scoot Mob. Baduka Gardener is one and a green for a 2-1 human monk who can tap and put a land card from your hand into play, but if you control 10 or more lands, flip Baduka Gardener and he becomes Dokai Weaver of Life. A 3-3 legendary creature human monk, and for 4 green green and tap, we can put an XX green elemental creature tokens into play where X is the number of lands we control. Rada Heart of Keld is 1 red green for a 3-3 legendary creature elf warrior. As long as it's your turn, Rada has first strike. You may look at the top card of your library anytime, and you may play lands from the top of your library. So that helps out our landfall trigger if we don't have any in our hand. However, for 4 red green, Rada gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of lands you control. Alright, so now that we've gone over everything that gives us advantage off of our lands, let's talk about how we're going to get lands onto the battlefield. Obviously in this deck we're going to have a lot of ramp, not only because we want ramp in a commander deck, but because we want to be getting multiple lands onto the battlefield per turn. Omnath, our commander, gives us advantage for the third time we put a land onto the battlefield but none after, but the rest of our creatures that we have give us an advantage every time we put a land out. So first up we've got Elvish Reclaimer, for one green we have a 1-2 Elf Warrior and he gets plus 2 plus 2 as long as there are 3 or more land cards in your graveyard. And for 2 generic and tap, sacrifice a land, search your library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. This is very neat because we can just get that second land onto the battlefield to trigger Omnath if we haven't already played a land that turn. Coiling Oracle is green and a blue for a 1-1 creature snake elf druid. When it enters the battlefield, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it into play. Otherwise, put that card into your hand. Azusa, Lost But Seeking, is 2 and a green for a 1-2 legendary creature human monk. You may play 2 additional lands on each of your turns. Corsair of Crufix is 1 green green for a 2-4. Play with the top card of your library revealed. You may play the top card of your library if it's a land card. And whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, you gain 1 life. Spring Bloom Druid is 2 and a green for a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a land. If you do, search your library for up to 2 basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. So if you've already played a land and you play out Spring Bloom Druid, you can immediately get that third activation off of Omnath, Locus of Creation, Dome Everybody for 4, 
and also get the additional land triggers off of our other landfall abilities. Next up, we've got Crop Rotation for one green. We have an instant as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a land, search your library for a land card, and put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Growth Spiral for green blue, we have an instant draw card. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Haro is two and a green for an instant sacrifice of land. Search your library for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. We also have Roiling Regrowth from Zendikar Rising, which is two and a green for an instant. It's the same thing as Haro. Animus Awakening is green and X for a sorcerer. Reveal the top X cards of your library. Put all lands from among them onto the battlefield tapped and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. However, it has spell mastery. If there are two or more instant and or sorcery cards in your graveyard, untap those lands. We also have Genesis Wave, which is green, 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 X for sorcery. Reveal the top X cards of your library. Put any number of permanent cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Then all cards revealed this way that weren't put onto the battlefield into your graveyard. Since our lands are permanents and they don't have a mana cost, then we can just put them straight onto the battlefield. We can get those land full triggers and we can also get some sweet other permanents as well. Next up, we have Scape Shift for two green green. We have a sorcery. Sacrifice any number of lands. Search your library for up to that many land cards, then put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Now, this card in this deck can be a just a complete game ender if we have enough landfall abilities on the battlefield. So, say we have the uh, Omnath Locus of Rage or a Nesting Dragon, we can sacrifice eight lands, search for eight lands, and get so many triggers off of our lands. The artifact ramp in this deck is is pretty minimal just because we're playing everything but black we have a lot of access to the best ramp that we can get especially ones that put lands onto the battlefield but we still have included a little bit of artifact ramp so we can just get to our big cards as fast as we can. I've included arcane signet, gruel signet, is it signet, selesnia signet, and simic signet. As you can tell most of our signets have at least a green in them because that's going to be the most important color in this deck because that is where our ramp is going to come from. So now that we've gone through our mana ramp and getting lands onto the battlefield to trigger our landfall abilities, let's talk about how we can do that multiple times. What, Griffin? Multiple times? Whatever could you mean? Well, my young friends, allow me to demonstrate. Because in the, in the history of magic, we have gotten some cards that allow us to bounce lands back to our hands for extra abilities. And if we can bounce lands back to our hands and play them, we get more landfall triggers. Now, this can be very important, especially if we're run out of basic lands in our deck, because we're only playing, I believe, about 12 is what I've put into this deck. So we're really going to want ways of reusing our lands is popping off with those landfall triggers. So first up, we've got Living Twister, which is red, red, green for a two, five elemental. For one and a red, discard a land card. Living Twister deals two damage to any target. And for one green, return a tap land you control to its owner's hand. Mina and Den Wildborn is two red green for a 4-4 legendary creature elf ally. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. And for red green, return a land you control to its owner's hand. Target creature gains trample until end of turn. Since we can play multiple lands with Mina and Den, we can get multiple land triggers if we have the man for it. Maloku the Clouded Mirror is 4 and a blue for a 2-4 Moonfolk Wizard with flying. For 1 generic, return a land you control to its owner's hand. Put a 1-1 blue illusion creature token with flying into play. This card, a new card from Zendikar Rising, doesn't bounce lands, but it's effectively even better. It is Ancient Green Warden. For 4 green green, a 5-7 elemental with reach, you may play land cards from your graveyard. And if a land entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. One of probably the most exciting new cards that we've gotten from Zendikar Rising that is a Panharmonicon slash Yarrick for our lands, because landfall wasn't already a good enough mechanic. So that is the basis of our Omnath Locust of Creation Landfall deck. Now, of course, I haven't played this one yet. I'm actually still deliberating whether we're going to play this on the next episode of Duel of the Peaks. We'll keep you posted. But if you would want to see this deck in action, then feel free to leave a comment saying that that's what you want to see. Because right now it's between this and Tazri. I'm really feeling Tazri, but I can be convinced. What was I saying? All right. I haven't played this deck yet. So... I don't have enough experience to tell you how the deck is going to play, but from what I'm seeing, the idea of the deck is to be able to get landfall abilities onto the battlefield and just rotate through your lands. That is enough advantage on its own to be able to power through and get so much synergy that your opponents cannot keep up. Even just one or two landfall triggers such as a Nesting Dragon, Omnath Locus of Rage, Avenger of Zendikar can really just take us home and can be considered a bomb simply by just putting lands onto the battlefield. Landfall is a very strong mechanic, rewarding you for something you already want to be doing. So real quick, before we move on to the lands, let me quickly go through our our interaction and some other spicy cards that I've put in this deck. For one green, we have Nature's Claim, an instant destroy target artifact or enchantment. Its controller gains four life. 
Path to Exile, one white for an instant. Exile target creature and its controller searches for a land and puts it onto the battlefield tapped. Pongify, one blue for an instant. Destroy target creature, it can't be regenerated. That creature's controller puts a 3-3 green ape creature token onto the battlefield. Beast Within, for two and a green, we have an instant destroy target permanent. Its controller creates a 3-3 green beast creature token onto the battlefield. And we also have Generous Gift, which does the same thing. However, it's two and a white, and it gives them a 3-3 green elephant creature token instead. We have Blasphemous Act and Cyclonic Rift as our two board wipes. Blasphemous Act to really just help us out in a pinch, or if we're having a slower start. Because we also have a lot of creatures, so we don't want to be playing too much creature board wipes. We also have Crux of Fate, which is one white white for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield for each opponent, exile up to one target non-land permanent that player controls until Grasp of Fate leaves the battlefield. For some extra card draw that we didn't already include as our landfall, we have Return of the Wild Speaker for Four in a green, we have an instant, choose one, draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, or non-human creatures you control get plus three plus three until end of turn. Colossal Majesty is two in a green for an enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep if you control a creature with power four or greater, draw a card. We also have Elemental Bond, which is two in a green for an enchantment. Whenever a creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Abundance is two green green for an enchantment that reads, if you would draw a card, you may instead choose land or non-land and reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card of the chosen kind. Put that card into your hand and put all the cards revealed this way on the bottom of your library in any order. So this can be really neat to get us the lands that we need to trigger our landfall abilities. But however in a pinch we can choose non-land to just get something other than lands if we really want that. Some more card draw, we have Guardian Project. For three and a green, we have an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, draw a card. We're also playing Zendikar Resurgent, which is five green green for an enchantment. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana to your mana pool for any type that land produced. And also, whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Now we only have one tutor in this deck and that is Eldamari's Call. It's green white for an instant, search your library for a creature card, reveal that card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Now there could be a lot of creatures that you can get. It's very important that you know the deck before you play this card because there's a lot of good choices. If I had to make a recommendation of what I would grab, uh, it, it, depending on which point we are in the game, I would grab something either that draws us cards or something that activates from our landfall triggers. So say if we already have six mana, I would grab either Omnath Locus of the Royal or Omnath Nath Locus of Rage to get us that advantage off of playing our lands. However, if we have so many lands, we might be able to just grab an Avenger of Zendikar, then play Escape Shift, and go crazy. Before we end this deck tech, I just wanted to go over the land base in this deck, so bear with me. Something I wanted to know about our lands is that, that any land that sacrifices itself to find another land is two landfall triggers. So suddenly, Terramorphic Expanse and, and Evolving Wilds become really, really good. Other lands that sacrifice are Fabled Passage, Blighted Woodland, Myriad Landscape, and Naya Panorama. We're playing a host of non-basic lands. We have Battlefield Forge, Botanical Sanctum, Canopy Vista, Clifftop Retreat, Ghost Quarter, Hinterland Harbor, Ketria Triome, Rogren Triome, Spire Bluff Canal, Sulphur Falls, Sun Petal Grove, and the four thriving lands from Jumpstart, which I find are very, very good in this deck. We are also playing one of each of the snow-covered lands, a plains, a mountain, a forest, and an island, and we are playing two of each of the regular basic lands in this deck. All right, guys, that is it for the deck tech. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the deck. If you have any suggestions for some awesome plays, interactions, or other cards that you would include in this deck, please comment them under this video. We love to see your guys' comments and we love to see your guys' feedback. If there is a commander that you are looking specifically to see from Zendikar Rising, then also comment that below because we are always looking for the decks that you guys want to see the most. With that, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate all of you and I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Happy gaming triggers or trigger our landfall abilities trigger our landfall mechanics trigger our landfall things moments trigger our landfall to trigger the landfall to trigger landfall to trigger our permanents that have landfall abilities that will activate